Hello everyone, today I'm sharing 18 things that I never buy. I know, it's crazy, because I'm always getting on here saying, I love this, I recommend this, you should give it a try, to not today. No, these, these things I, I never buy. I did a video similar to this almost two years ago, and you guys seem to really like it, probably because it's very, very different than my normal content. So some of these things, I know I'm prefacing, you're gonna totally, absolutely, disagree with me, sound off in the comments, that's okay. We'll have a little debate, a friendly debate. Well, I'll just get started with my first, my first thing that I never buy and it's vitamin infused waters or enhanced waters. Okay, all of this, take this with a grain of salt. You do you, I will do me. I think not only is it a waste of money because man, do they inflate those prices, but I also think that the, it, it's not even good quality enhancements. I think it's much, much, much better to just buy normal water, just drink, just drink water. And then if you want to enhance it on your own, I, I do have a couple recommendations. And through this video, I am going to counter some of these things with better solutions. Uh, so for example, the water, I love these trace mineral drops. They do not taste that great. So I want to preface with that. Uh, if you want to add this to your water, it gives you so many vitamins and minerals that your body is really craving. However, it doesn't really taste that great. Uh, so I do recommend maybe adding some pure essential oils. You could add some fruits. You could even put it into juice and then you really don't even taste it at all. Uh, but to me, this is a much better solution than buying those souped up, kind of fake, enhanced vitamin waters. Number two, antibacterial hand soaps. I never buy them, ever. Which is, it probably sounds crazy to many of you because we, we are in 2021 where germs, we're very aware of them. But I just wanna caution anyone who lives in the United States, triclosan. It's still a thing. It's still in most antibacterial hand soaps and it's bad. It's actually banned in many, many countries. Just a quick update. The FDA recently banned triclosan from all over-the-counter antibacterial washes. So it's an ingredient that we no longer have to worry about here in the US, but I know I have international viewers, so it's something to keep in mind. Kudos to some brands that are removing it though. Bath and Body Works being one of them, good job. There's tons of studies out there comparing antibacterial hand soaps to just regular, regular old hand soaps and they kill the same amount of germs. So that's what I buy. This next one is gonna strike a nerve with so many of you, I just know it. Uh, but I no longer buy excessive holiday decorations. I know, uh, and we're even in the fall season here and I haven't bought even one thing. I haven't even bought one pumpkin, no. I haven't, I haven't bought a hay bale or, or a witch's hat or a fake bat, no. I don't know, I'm just kind of over it. I mean, I know Christmas is coming around. I'll put up a Christmas tree. I'm just kind of over every year buying more clutter essentially. And I don't know, I'm just kind of in, I'm just in this, the mindset of a couple decorations to let me be aware of the season we are in. And then I just stop. The next thing that I never buy are conventionally grown strawberries, which basically means I never buy non-organic strawberries. And I know some of you are like, yes, organic. And other people are like, you're dumb. You're spending way too much money on fruits and vegetables. You couldn't care less. And I guess I just wanted to to call attention to the Dirty Dozen. Have you ever heard of this list? It's basically a list of 12 fruits and vegetables that are the most heavily sprayed with chemicals and pesticides. So if you're going to buy anything organic, it should be the items on this 12 dirty dozen list. And strawberries are number one. So if I ever buy strawberries, they are absolutely organic or I just don't buy them. Um, but I still keep that list kind of in my back pocket, kind of in my head when I'm at the grocery store. All right, so while we're talking about food, I also never buy pre-cut fruits and vegetables. And it's not because of what you're thinking. I know all of you are thinking because it's so much more expensive and that's true, but it also comes with convenience, which can be a good thing. However, as soon as you cut open a fruit or vegetable, oxygen hits it. All of the nutrients start to be depleted. That's just what happens. So imagine fruits and vegetables that are pre-cut sitting on a grocery shelf, waiting for people for days for people to come buy them, take them home and eat them. You're really losing out on all of the health benefits or at least most of them in eating fruits and vegetables. So I just take the long run. I save some money and I buy, I buy the big, the big, the, the pineapple, I buy the big pineapple. The last food that I never buy, or at least, I'm gonna rewind, I really try to limit this, it, it still, it sneaks in there sometimes, uh, but it's processed meats. So that includes hot dogs, that's the main one, that's the big one. Uh, it also includes salami, bologna, lunch meat, canned meat, beef jerky. If you don't know, processed meat is just, it, it goes through a process. It's not like normal, 
regular meat uh, goes through a process of, full of chemicals uh, just to really prolong its life. Uh, it really enhances the taste. People love it. it. It's also known to cause many, many, many chronic diseases and illnesses, cancer being one of them. It, again, just take this with a grain of salt. It's just something that we really try to limit. Although, like I said, man, those hot dogs, they, they, they sneak in there sometimes. All right, let's get off the health wagon here because I know there's so many people that disagree with what I just said. Uh, but let's talk about periods. Cause that's fun. I call it George. Have I told you guys that? I feel like I definitely have. When my time of the month comes around, it's George. George is here. George isn't here today, but George was here a couple weeks ago. And that leads me to the, the things that I never buy. A disposable. Is that right? Yeah, disposable feminine products. I used, I mean, like tampons, pads, like all those things, uh, I used to buy on repeat and I no longer do. Period underwear, I've, I've literally talked about that to death. So if, if you're new to my channel though, period underwear is where it's at. I'll link them down below, guys. You just put them on. You don't even worry about it. It You rewash them. It Oh my gosh, they're life-changing. Uh, but also like the Diva Cup, I, I don't use that as much, um, but it's just, you, you buy it one time and, and, and it works and, and it's just, I don't know. It's to me way better than the disposable thing that you like shove up in there and it's just like also not 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 great it's just not great number eight and number nine kind of go hand in hand so I'll just do them together but it is makeup remover and face wipes I just I don't ever I don't buy them anymore they're just unnecessary and it's because of makeup eraser which is that cloth which if you know I've, I no, this is not sponsored I know I've talked about them kind of extensively in recent videos so I won't spend too much time on it but basically it's just a cloth uh, with millions of fibers that literally remove all of your makeup, even waterproof mascara with only water. It is so magical. Um, so I know, like I don't need makeup remover anymore. I don't need any face wipes. These work so much better than that. I travel with these, they're just the best. So I'll link them below. I have a code with them. Again, not sponsored, don't what, do whatever. Um, but it's just amazing. Oh, and speaking of mascara, perfect segue, because I just mentioned mascara, you know. Uh, Mascara primer, no longer buy that. I've tried it, I've tried to buy it, I have bought it many, many, many times. I have white mascara primer, I have like this bright blue mascara, it doesn't even matter the color. Basically the point of it is, you put it on first to prime your lashes to kind of like give a, an extra coat to make them look when you apply like your real mascara, full and thick and long. No, it makes them look clumpy. I've, I'm, I know so many of you are gonna give me suggestions. Give me suggestions. Go ahead, give me suggestions. Comment down below. But I have yet to find a mascara primer that actually makes my lashes look good. Hairsprays of any kind, I never buy. I, I, I never, I never buy them. I never promote them. I never like them, uh, which is kind of ironic today because I, I, my hair looks bad today. I, anytime I am wearing a braid in my hair, it's because I was lazy this morning. But I'm talking like hairsprays volumizing sprays, texturizing sprays, finishing sprays, weightless sprays. There are so many sprays out there and I feel like they either don't really do anything or they just make my hair feel sticky. So I'm not a fan and I never buy them. Now this next one is is, is going to come as a surprise because I definitely do buy a lot of this stuff. Like I, I'm constantly ordering things, things are sent to me, I'm testing things out all the time but it's skincare. So I definitely love skincare. I use a lot of it, but when it comes to like, I guess my point here is don't buy too many skincare products. That's what I'm trying to say, because I think you should find like two to three things that you love, create your own routine. They can be of different brands and, and whatnot. But I feel like people that have literally like a 15 step skincare routine is just excessive. I think that they're getting a little too sucked into all of the things that these skincare products could do and you're kind of just spending too much money. Your, your skin can't like absorb that much, you know what I mean? The next thing is kind of interesting, but I never get regular polish pedicures anymore, which I know some people are like, don't even care about manicures or pedicures. Um, and I really only do in the summer months. Like if you can see my feet, then I do, tend to get pedicures, but I've since discovered the gel polish pedicures and I know I am late to the game. A lot of you have already discovered this, but I, I get, like I used to get gel on my nails and I just thought like, how do you get that off your toes? Like that's really weird. <sighs> totally worth it. It lasts so, like you, it never chips. Like I can go like six weeks, 
even more sometimes with the same gel pedicure totally worth the money. So even though I recommend gel pedicures, I never get gel manicures anymore. And I know there's some people that just like never go to a nail salon and which that's awesome. I probably wouldn't either if I didn't make videos and like show my hands all the time. Uh, but if you are somebody that gets your nails done and you haven't tried the dip powder, just for me, humor me, try it one time. I think it is so much better than gel just because we use our hands so much more and it's so strong and it can go directly on top of your natural nail. They don't have to file your nail down. They don't have to damage it at all. It's so much better. The next one is kind of dumb, but it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. I no longer make very frequent appointments. So for example, the nail thing, I, I, like I, always get the same light pink neutral color. And I think a lot of you probably think it's because I just love this color so much. I mean, I do like it, but there's a completely different motive behind it. I just feel like this color kind of blends into my nail bed and it allows me to go way longer in between appointments. So it, it saves me time, it saves me money. Hair appointments are another example. I feel like, you know, a lot of beauticians and nothing against them at all, but it's been kind of beat into our heads that we should get our hair cut like every six weeks or so. So, and I just think that, I think you can really go a lot longer in between appointments and, and maybe don't go as long as me. It's been many, many months since I've gotten my hair cut. Oh my gosh, don't look at my ends. I just think that if you can kind of stretch out those appointments, why not? I never buy fancy greeting cards. And this is the only one that I'm repeating from my last video, but it's because I have a new solution, something new that I've been doing. So anyone that knows me in real life, they will know I never buy cards. Like I do not like the fancy greeting cards that are like $5, $6, $7 for you to just like sign your name and then, then, then they just throw it away. No. So what I used to do, and sometimes I still do, I'll, just a pack of blank cards, they're like two bucks, write a personalized message, so much better. But a new thing to try is just getting like a $5 Starbucks gift card or maybe a local cafe $5 uh, gift card. It comes like a little envelope. You can write your, your little like personalized message on the envelope and then they get like a $5, you know, gift card for a coffee or a sandwich or a donut or something like that. It's so much better. You're still spending the same amount of money and the person, I promise you, will enjoy it a lot more. This next one is for any parent out there with kids. So we no longer buy unnecessary toys. And I'm sure you guys can relate with me. I mean, I feel like our kids these days, they have so many toys, so many toys. And half the time they're not even playing with them. I mean, they're from Christmas, they're from birthdays, they're from parties, they're from friends. We have since been doing this little tactic and it works like a charm. Get a big bin, like a really big bin from like Lowe's or, or Home Depot and put it in your garage, maybe a storage room, just hide it. When your kids aren't looking, gather up some of their toys, put it in the bin. And then like three or four months later, get the bin out and be like, oh, look at these new toys we have. And then, you know, put some other toys in the bin for later. And it's just create like a rotational system they will be so excited for these toys that they haven't seen in many months and they'll actually play with them. It's like, it's like they're getting new toys, but they're totally not. This next one is just different than like what I used to do, but I now no longer buy the latest and greatest newest phone. A anytime a new phone is released, I do have an iPhone, but I mean, the same applies to like Android, iPhone, whatever. Um, it used to be a huge deal that a new phone was out and everyone would like race to it. Like, there'd be like a lineup. And I feel like that still kind of happens to some extent, but just not even close to what it used to be. I feel like they're releasing new phones and it's just not that much better. So I guess I would just encourage you guys to just hold off, just hold off. It's not gonna be that much faster. Um, save some money. And I mean, I'm sure in the next couple years, there will be some crazy amazing phone that comes out and maybe I want it. But for now, I'm good with this. This is the iPhone 11. What are we on now? 13, 14? I don't know. So those are my 18 things I never buy. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. And if I did mention anything to buy kind of instead, I will have it linked down below. But otherwise, I'll see you very soon. Bye.